All right, guys, I got another challenge lock out of Australia. This one's from James G. He's got a lock picking channel called Dark Arts Lock Picking, and he calls this one the Devil's Reject. So that kind of fits in with the theme of his channel. Uh, dark Arts Lock Picking. There you go. Anyway, he says, um, I've been wanting to make a challenge lock for a while. This is one of the trickiest locks I've made so far. I want to hear your your uh, viewers' feedback and tell me what you think about the lock. And that's, of course, assuming I can get this thing open. I do have a key right here taped at the bottom of the letter. I'm not going to show the rest of that, but uh, there's the key taped up. I don't see anything on the outside of this other than, you know, it took a lot of time to engrave it. No, you know, no drilling to put in any side pins, it doesn't look like. So we got no weirdness. So I think we're just going to be dealing with six pins. It's a nice wide open. I believe it is a Lockwood. Uh, nice wide open. I think I can use top of the keyway and I'm going to take a risk and maybe if it fits in there use my rat yoke on this one and pick from the bottom. It doesn't seem to pinch. I think I can get away with this guy. I don't like to risk him because I can't afford to <laughs> replace him but on this lock it seems like uh, unless there's some super springs and I don't feel any I think this is the perfect opportunity to take advantage of this rat yoke. So let me get them clamped up and let's see if we can't get this thing picked open. All right, guys, I can use top of the keyway. Nice wide open. And this is 50,000. A lot of flop in this. So let me go ahead and I'll pick it, uh, get it counterclockwise. Let's go ahead and mark it. So let me turn it as far over as it'll go and just put a mark right there. So if we get a fault set, everybody will know it. All right, I am going to start off with this guy. And everything's kind of bound up. So let me put super light tension on it and let's try that. All right, let me force somebody. Okay, that was six. And everything's bound up. All right, let's, let's just pick one, I guess. That's two, and I'm not going to break that pick. All right, let's try this again. I mean, ultra, super, mega light tension. I've got a feeling everything in here. Let me put the microphone a little closer down there so you maybe can hear it. A little crunching going on. There we go. A little counter rotation on three. Let me zoom in. You can just barely see that mark moving. See if I can get it back in there now. Where'd you go? Everything seized up. Oh, oh, God. That's what happens when you lose super. Okay, there we go. Pin two, a little bit of counter rotation. Oh, literally. I mean, that's how light that tension is. My goodness, and he's already bound. See, I'm getting counter rotation, and he's just seizing up. So I'm going to have to release tension. And he's still bound up. And he's still giving counter rotation. What in the world? Totally bound. I mean, like, no tension on this guy. I'm going to release and just push him up and see what happens. Okay, got two clicks out of him. I got a feeling he's, we're going to find some sharp edges on him. Okay, that's pin one, I believe. Got a click. Still no false set. Go. That was three. I got some counter rotation on him. And there we go. We got a false set going. That was pin one. Okay, that is counter rotation on pin two. I think he's good. Got a little click. 
haven't dropped my tension wrench yet. That's six. That was three again. And it started to counter rotate and then kind of stopped. Kind of weird. Might not have picked him all the way, but he's not still not giving me any counter rotation there. Check one. All right. What I'm thinking is there's a very deep one in there somewhere. Let me grab another hook. This is a 15,000 from the SS Dev, the medium hook. I'm thinking there's a very high one in there somewhere that the even the uh, rat yoke deforest can't reach up that high. Come on, give me something. Okay, they turned a little more there. We got a good fault set going. I think we're hung up on a T-pin at this point. We can just find him. What in the world? Trap pin, maybe? Maybe not enough. I'm really putting some serious pressure on those pins, trying to force some kind of feedback. I'm trying to get behind my tension wrench. Let me move that guy out a little bit more. Make sure we're getting on one there. I don't think we're open. Let's check it. The actuator may be on the vise, pressing against the side of the vise. And now we got a really deep, it is, it's pressing on the side of the vise back there. So it's a really tight core. All right. It's a really tight core. He was hitting on the side of the vise, so we got what I thought was a very deep fault set. In fact, I think, unless we get it. Yeah. See, unless we had a trap, we got to open. I had no idea. I just wasn't paying attention. That is a long actuator, and he was just knocking up against that jaw. Anyway, let's see what Dark Arts has. Let's first go ahead and let's take this down, zoom out. Let's see what this key looks like. This is black nasty supplemented with super glue. All right, pretty nice. We got some low cuts, high one there, a couple of low ones again, another high one in the of course in the very back. Let's see if this thing works, and it does. It works perfectly. It doesn't even snag at all. All right, let's go ahead get my tray up here. Get all the rest of the stuff out of the way. And find Phillips. And let's see, this guy will fit. I'm gonna move that mic. I keep bumping into it a little bit. I'm gonna guess serrated with several T pins, and then there's a couple with very sharp edges, like very deep spools. Come here, you. Very deep spools with very sharp edges. And there might even be some counter milling on the ones with the spools. And there, I've really hung it out there. I'm rarely right on this stuff. 
Oh, don't tell me. Is that right? That's about as close as we're going to get. That's, that's pretty close. All right, no weirdness. Not yet, anyway. Now we're starting to see it. All right, looking in there, I can see, yeah, there's some counter milling and there's threading in one, counter milling in two, three, and four, and then threading in five and six. I don't even have to take the pins out, I can see that. Okay, we have standard. Next one is, I almost said torpedo, but he's just a homemade spool, but it's angled spool. Very sharp edge, three standard. Four is the same thing. It's a homemade with a spool edge on him, very sharp. Number five is all serrated. And the last one, serrated. Okay, so we got spool in two. And two had the undercut, so that's that makes perfect sense. Three is standard, four is undercut, I mean is a, a spool. And four is also undercut, perfect. So that's exactly what you want to see. And then serrated pins in five and six. And we have threads on five and six. So he really put a lot of thought into this core and how he was going to pin it. Let's see what he's got upstairs. Probably some more homemade nastiness. Okay, there's our T-pin. Ah, he's more than a T-pin. Yeah, oh, he was a pin and pin. And we have a little steel, this is a steel piece that goes right up inside of there, just like that. Very nice. Okay, let me get those fine tweezers so I can grab these guys, because I'm pretty sure we're going to see some variation in spring. There's a double spring in one. Okay, let's take number two. Kind of a weak spring. Oh, another, home, another homemade pin and pin. Come out of there, you. He was in like that. Come here, you. Tiny little spring in that dude. And he also was hollow. But he was like this. So that pin was fitting in there just like that. Like a little nail head. All right, where do you got the spring? Number three. I'm trying to do this through the camera. Not so easy. It looks like another... Another pin and pin. Hey. Yep, another one. He also was in there just like that. And he is a, the sleeve on him is also spooled. So I'm starting to see more and more of that. You guys are getting more and more devious, especially you Australians. You guys sit around thinking about this. I know it's summer there. All right, let's go back from the, Start with number six then so we can all see what's going on here. You know, the other day I assumed that this was out of round. I, I'm starting to think it's this follower. I might have beat on him just a little too much. Probably going to have to take a file and there's probably a little lip on there. So we're going to have to keep going this way. What happens when you use my favorite technique? Oh, man, I dropped him. I think it is another pin and pin. No, nope, it's just a homemade spool. Number five, again, homemade. And he was in there like that with another tiny little spring. Uh, very hair-like. Where did he go? There he is. And the last one. Okay, it's probably going to be another pin and pin, be my guess. Let's pull this out and take a look. There, he just fell onto my finger. Right there. And he is another, he's got serrated. So this is a moving sleeve with serrations. We had one with spools, and then we had one with serrations. And we had a pretty strong spring in that guy. Very nice, very well thought out. Let's take a look inside of here and uh, see if there's anything else. No, all of these are standard in the body. 
and it would be hard. I mean, it'd be hard to thread those things. There's no way to get in there. So didn't expect anything unless you go in like this with a really fine Dremel. You can sometimes get it one and two and then perhaps six, but not in this case. There's what we got from Dark Arts Lockpicking. James, I appreciate all the effort you put in this. Let's take a close look at these pins. See what we're dealing with. Again, a lot of pin and pin action on here. This one is a removable sleeve, and he's got a couple of real fine serrations on him. This guy is also a removable pin and nothing on that sleeve. This one is a pin and pin, and he had a spool on the sleeve. These two were, are both homemade. We have a homemade spool, very sharp edges to grab the undercut. And we have so this either the driver or the key pin can grab on those undercuts. This guy was in a threaded chamber, so we got all serrations here, got some serrations there. And then if you really screw up that sharp angle there, it still has one last chance to grab. And on the last one, we had another pin and pin in a serrated chamber or a threaded chamber with serrated on the key pin. And then we have real fine serrations on the moving sleeve. There you go, guys. Awful tricky stuff out of Australia. Appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal, guys. Okay.